Welcome everyone, this is Mind Blaster. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Project Serpo, specifically the planet Serpo. And I'm getting this information from serpo.org. I'll put the uh, link in the description down below. But if for anyone that wants to look for it, this is info release number seven. This was actually po uh, released November 17th, 2005. Here are some geological facts regarding Serpo our team members compiled. The planet's diameter was measured at about 7,218 miles. The surface gravity was 9.60 m slash s 2. The rotation periods was approximately 43 hours. Our team contained two geologists. They were also cross-trained as biologists. The first thing our bio geologists did was map the entire planet. The first step was to divide the planet in half, thus creating an equator. Then they established a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. Within each hemisphere, they created four quadrants. Finally, they established the north and south poles. This was the easiest method to study the planet. Most of the Eben communities were placed along the equator. However, there were some communities established north of the equator in each of the four quadrants in the northern hemispheres. There were no communities located in either poles. The southern pole was desert. It was barren land with virtually no precipitation where absolutely nothing grew in this area. There were volcanic rock formations, and part of the extreme south contained a rock desert. Temperatures in the South Pole were measured at between 90 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Going further north from the South Pole in Quadrant 1, the team found extrusive rocks. This indicated some volcanic activity in, our, in the area. Our team found numerous volcanoes in this area. The team found several fissure eruptions in this region with standing water. The water was tested and contained high levels of sulfur, zinc, copper, and other unknown chemicals. Moving from east to quadrant two, the team found basically the same volcanic fields of rocks. However, in one particular location near the north end of quadrant two, the team found an alkali flat on earth. These were formed by streams flowing into a desert or arid location. Our team found hard mud covered by alka alkaline salts. Some vegetation was growing in this area. Moving to Quadrant 3, the team found a form of badlands, an arid region that is lined with deep gullies with sparse vegetation. The gullies or valleys were extremely deep, some going down 3,000 feet. The team found the first serpo animal in this region. It looked like an armadillo. This creature was extremely hostile and tried to attack the team several times. The even guide used some type of sound device, sonic directed sound beam, to scare away the creature. Moving to the equatorial region, our team found desert style landscapes which contained patches of vegetation. The team found numerous pockets of water fed to the ground by artesian wells. This water was the freshest, containing only the unknown chemicals. It tasted good and even drank and used it. Our team still boiled it because during culture tests, unknown types of bacteria were detected. Moving to the northern hemisphere, the team found a major change in climate and landscape. One team member, team member who had coined it Quadrant One in the Northern Hemisphere, named it Little Montana. The team found trees similar to the evergreen style of earth trees. These trees were milked by the Ebens. A white fluid was extracted and drank. Numerous other types of vegetation was found in this region. Standing water was possibly fed by either artesian wells or fissure eruptions was found. In one area, marshlands were seen. Large plants were observed growing in the marshy area. The Evens used these plants for food. 
The bulb of the plant was very large. The bulb tasted something like a melon. Our team eventually moved to an area in Quadrant 1 in the Northern Hemisphere. This area contained moderate temperatures, 50 to 80 degrees, and ample amounts of shade. The Evans built a little community for the team. Most of the remaining exploration of the planet was done from this point. The team only explored the southern hemisphere once, obtaining geological information. Because of the intense heat, the team decided not to venture back. The team continued to explore the northern hemisphere, whereas the team traveled toward the North Pole, the temperatures cooled considerably. The team found mountains raised to an elevation of 15,000 feet in valleys that sank below the basic mark the team established for sea level. Lush green fluids were found containing a form of grass, but contained bulbs. The team coined these fields clover fields, even though the bulbs were not clover. The radiation levels were lower in the northern hemisphere than at the equator and southern hemisphere. The North Pole contained cold weather, and the team saw the first sign of snow. Blankets of snow littered the landscape around the North Pole. The snow measured about 20 feet at its deepest. The temperature was at was a constant 33 degrees. Our team never found the temperature to vary in this region. The Evens could not stand to be in this region for long. They suffered extreme hypothermia. The team's guide wore a suit similar to a spacesuit with built-in heaters. Our team found evidence of past earthquakes. Fault lines were found along the northern tip of the southern hemisphere. Exfoliation was observed along with ex extrusive rocks, which indicated magma flows in the past. Our team brought back hundreds of samples, samples of Serpo soil, vegetation, water, and other items for testing on Earth. During our team's exploration, they discovered numerous types of animals. The strangest was the beast, which is in quotation marks, which looked like a large ox. The animal was timid and never seemed to be hostile. Another animal looked like a mountain lion but had fur around the neck. The animal was curious but was considered hostile by the Evens, but was not considered hostile by the Evens. During the exploration of Quadrant 4 of the Southern Hemisphere, the team found a very long and large creature that appeared to be a snake. This creature was deadly, as explained by the the Evens, the head of the creature was large and contained almost human-like eyes. This was only the only time our team used their weapons and killed the creature. The Evens, Evens didn't appear to be upset that the team killed the creature, but was upset they used a weapon. The team brought four forty-five caliber Colt, standard military issued, handguns and four M2 carbine rifles. After killing the creature... The team dissected it. The internal organs were strange and nothing similar to an Earth-style snake. The creature measured 15 feet long and 1.5 feet in diameter. The team was curious about the eyes. Examination of the eyes revealed cones similar to human eyes. The eyes contained an iris and the back contained a large nerve similar to the optic nerve feeding into the creature's brain. The brain was large, much larger than any earth-based snake. The team wanted to eat the meat from the creature, but the Evans guides politely told them no. And that's it for the geological uh, info here on Section 7. Um, let me know if you guys want me to cover more on Project Serpo or if you want me to go into something else. Thank you.